Welcome back, everybody. This is episode six of my Elicity Cognitive Trust video series. And in this episode, we're talking all about Elicity policy, how it's architected, how it's implemented, and how you deal with it from a day to day basis. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you've seen how I've demonstrated how easy it is to implement our platform, how easy it is to get Elicity micro segmentation deployed across your entire network. We have focused on time to value at this organization, and we've extended that time to value focus into the policy design and implementation as well. Today, I've invited Brent Caldwell, VP of Solution Architecture here at Elicity, to talk to us about how he and his team deploys Elicity policy on a daily basis for our customers. Brent, thank you so much for joining. Thanks, Dana, happy to be here. So Brent, in all my previous videos, I've focused on our rapid time to value. The fact that our control plane, management plane, and policy plane is fully cloud delivered and cloud native and can be spun up in 30 minutes is a big deal to our customers. And then for the on-prem component, our virtual edge, it's completely software based. So to get this platform up and running and to get your first policy in place doesn't take a lot of effort and it's really straightforward. But I'm more interested in what we've done to make building policy and the care and feeding of this policy over time uh, to be easy as well. So I'm curious, after initial implementation of the solution, how do most customers get started with building Elicity policy? Yeah, Dana, I think that in terms of the deployment, it is important to understand and not just skim over the fact that the solution is so easy to deploy. And many, de many deployments, I don't know how many, you know, you, I'm sure you've been on projects where, where it, you know, it takes months just to get to the, the solution stood up. Yeah. You're not even getting to where you can actually do policies and things of that nature or to be able to get to the value of the, of the solution. What we're what we're talking about here is being able to get to building policies potentially within the same day of the mm -hmm. initial deployment, and so we start by looking at what types of asset classes or device classes are on the network or we expect to be on the network, and we build what we we call policy groups. Mm -hmm. So think of printers or phone IP phones or. IP cameras and things of that nature, or, you know, for users, is this user a member of Active Directory or is the user a contractor? Mm -hmm. So once you've grouped assets together, our system begins to map out dependencies between those, those assets. So we're in what right. you would classically refer to as monitor mode. We're monitoring the flows of communication or traffic between certain between these different asset groups. So think of Active Directory users, do they communicate to printers? If they do, what ports and protocols do those users communicate to those printers on? Or should they only be able to communicate to print servers? IP cameras to IP phones, is there any communication there? And if so, like that's an area to start to look at and determine, does that make sense? Should we allow that? Should we not? So that is the first step is to group assets together into those into those device types or user types asset classes and and again we call those those policy groups okay so policy groups that make complete sense it's you're finding commonalities of devices and putting them together so we can create the correct policies for them but what do we do after we create these policy groups what's the next step yeah the very first thing that, that customers are looking for is how can i get time to value how can we get the quickest time to value hmm. and really what we're looking for is is the low-hanging fruit policies that we can create right out of the gate. So, and typically they're coarse grain policies. We know right out of the gate that an IP phone should not talk to an IP camera. Right. Or an IP camera should not talk to a printer or a contractor should maybe only have internet access or only have access to certain devices. We can very quickly determine that without really any sort of fancy work. We just need to know like, hey, these types of devices should not be able to communicate. Let's build a policy for that. And again, it's coarse grain, deny all typically, or allow all between, between those assets, which typically the default is to allow uh, access between devices. And then we put in a policy that says uh, to deny access between those. But that is the first step that, that most customers are looking to do. And it's, it, it's a really easy thing to do, but it provides a ton of value. You can have a printer and an IP camera in the same VLAN 
sitting on the same network, not able to communicate to each other with our solution within a few minutes of, of implementation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We don't care what the VLANs, the VRFs, private VLANs, how it's been exactly. set up. It doesn't matter to us. We're caring about yeah. the devices, users, and apps on a network, and we'll figure out where they are and how they're connected. The system figures that out for you. Exactly. So what about customers that don't really know everything that's on the network? I know that we'll dynamically identify everything that's on the network for them, but they may not know what proper traffic flows need to be allowed for the for that platform or that product to operate correctly. So do we have a solution for that? We do. And and what we're doing around uh, around that aspect is we within our matrix, we have a, a, a policy group matrix. Within that policy group matrix, we start to map out what communication is taking place between those different types of devices on the network. So you can very clearly see if there is an IP phone communicating to an IP camera or mm. a printer communicating to an IP phone or Active Directory users communicating to other Active Directory users, for example, or Active Directory users communicating to IP cameras. And then you can determine if that communication is, is, uh, is something that should be allowed or, or not be allowed. We give the ability to apply a policy based on the traffic you're seeing on the network. Yeah. And we, we give the ability to click a, a button and just add a policy from that traffic flow and say, look, we want to either allow or deny these these this communication between these assets. Okay. So like discovery mode, our solution will figure out what policy groups are talking to what other policy groups and on what ports and protocols. And then we can offer the intelligence to the end user on how to build that policy. So we can give you some advice like, Hey, you know, we, we see these sets of ports and protocols, yeah. these policy groups. And if you feel that this shouldn't be there, it's a click of a button and it creates the policy for you. And you can go in and add and remove different entries to say, yeah, yeah. I do want to allow that. I don't want to allow that. Okay. I've worked in projects in the past where the entire project was to determine dependency dependencies between groups of assets. Right. So yeah. what group should be able to communicate to another? And what we've done is just brought that into the solution. So yeah. we very quickly, very easily provide customers the ability to see what assets are communicating to what other assets on, on the network. And then they can determine, again, to your point, if that should be a policy between those. And we do make policy recommendations within the system as well. Yeah. And, and, and you can take those policy recommendations based on those traffic flows. So this allows us to get to building policies extremely quickly. You don't have to wait forever after you deploy the solution. Well, first of all, you don't have to wait six to 12 months to deploy the solution to get your first policy in place. But even after you have deployed it, the next day you can start building policy after the system has picked up uh, some of the traffic on the network. Absolutely love that. There's some solutions out there that's all they do. They're agents that sit on the computer or sit on your, your apps and whatever and try to figure out application flows. But we're doing this in real time so we can help customers get to that value real quickly. With, with confidence as well, Dana. I mean, you know that these devices or assets on the network or users, they do or don't communicate with, with other assets on the network. And you can determine that again with confidence. And that's one of the one of the things that you know customers are looking for right out of the gate is they don't want to do any harm mm -hmm. necessarily. Uh, so there are there's there can be some hesitancy to move forward with building a policy, mm -hmm. not knowing if there is that dependency between those those assets or not. So we can we can provide that you know with with a lot of clarity. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. So not only can we tell customers what's communicating, but there's also power in telling customers what's not communicating. So let's say over 60 days, 90 days, 180 days, we don't see any communication between two policy groups. Why not just block it? Why not limit those conduits and, and restrict them so that only their access that's needed to work is, is there? All right, that's a really good point. So we've created policy groups. We've handled the low hanging fruit policies. We've looked right. at the illicit traffic flow analysis and created some more in-depth policies. Now what? What's the next step? Yeah, so the next step is is to, I mean, like sort of like the, what can we do to get more value out of the, out of the system? Because you get to, you're going to get to this value in terms of the basic low hanging fruit policies and also using the traffic analysis to determine what the policy should be between uh, other assets uh, that maybe are not so low hanging fruit. 
then you're going to start to make sure that any new assets that come on the network are in policy groups. So you're going to make sure that from a care and feeding perspective is to make sure that any different type of device that comes on the network, which we would alert you to, is going to get uh, classified and put into a policy group and have a set of policies applied to mm-hmm. it. The other, the other piece is being able to integrate with either a CMDB or a device specific inventory system, like an OT or medical device inventory system, integrating with those and getting, getting more specific data that is already within that system of record and using it within our system to, to either enhance our policies or to build, build new policies or policy groups. Okay. So leveraging these industry specific identity engines or even a CMDB allows us to enrich our existing uh, asset inventory and, and all the attributes that are in there. So we can leverage these as, uh, these attributes in our policy. So we can get even more granular now because of our automatic device profiling, dynamic device profiling that we have built into the solution. So this is pretty powerful because now you've spent a lot of time building these policy groups and you want it to kind of run on its own now, right? So the dynamic profiling of our solution is, is pretty powerful, I think. A new camera comes online or uh, a new medical device comes online, a new CT scanner, and it automatically gets put into the correct policy. You don't have to do much. Exactly. There. So from a care and feeding perspective, really what else is there for customers to do? Right. The day two care and feeding should be focused less on the implementation of the solution. Like that should just be simple and easy and running, Mm -hmm. it should be more focused, actually solely focused on the policy and perfecting that policy. That is, that is where the focus needs to be or should be. And that's, that's the value that we're delivering. And so that is what the solution enables us to do is to do that very simply. So we want to be able to get to where we can, we can make the policy better and better and better, more fine grained less coarse grained over time. Yeah, Brent, you're absolutely correct. We need to stop wasting our engineers' time on the implementation of these solutions and the months to years it takes to get any value out of them. You know, we need to stop trying to configure port level things, 802.1x and troubleshooting 802.1x and troubleshooting MAC authentication bypass and device profiling by shutting and no shutting of ports and all these crazy things we've had to do in the past to see things show up so that we can protect them. That needs to be solved uh, for us day one, so that we can focus on building appropriate policies for our environment. Now, and if you've noticed uh, throughout this conversation, we haven't once said IP address or MAC or VLAN or VRF in context of building illicity policy, because we're not focused on that. That's not important here. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I mean, one one thing to, to kind of call out is that it isn't important as it relates to how policies are configured and how devices are tracked and assets identified. It is important as it relates to our job of of translating a a device type to those things, because ultimately in the network, the policy does have to be created on those network constructs. But as an administrator, I don't care about those network constructs. I don't care what VLAN a device is in, what the MAC address is, what the IP address is. I don't care where it's located. The, the policy that I'm putting in is based on the fact that it is a Cisco IP phone mm-hmm. and that a Cisco IP phone should have X, Y, Z sets of policies between assets. And we're not doing, again, this isn't basic on off the network, network access control. That is really, you know, just saying, Hey, this device could come on the network and maybe it gets put in this VLAN. We, mm-hmm. We're not doing that. This is micro segmented system level access. Yeah. across the across the network um, and it doesn't matter where that asset is what VLAN is in or any any of those things yeah or if any of uh, network constructs have changed like ip address have changed or its location and where it is in the network has changed we really don't care about that we'll pick it up we'll, we'll understand that it's changed we'll reprofile and make sure it gets the correct uh policy but from the perspective of the person who's manipulating the policies in our ui they don't need to ever worry about that. They'll get the information, but they don't need to worry about it to build the policy. Exactly. Okay, I think that covers everything I wanted to clarify for my audience. So I really appreciate your time, Brent, and all your expertise. Thanks, Dana. My pleasure.
Okay, we'll see you in the next one. Take care. All right.